First, though, I'm joined by Professor Patrice Forger to discuss the issues related to post-operative opioid use in Europe. Patrice, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Let's start by talking about the, the issue and the public health consequences, because although North America remains the centre of the opioid crisis, what's the extent of the public health consequences linked to prescription opioids here in Europe? So we have many questions about that. The short answer is that we don't really know. The limited evidence we have and the limited data we have for Europe is that we can be totally reassured about the existence or the inexistence of a public health problem with prescription opiates. We definitely know that prescription rates massively increased and in some countries opiate-related death increased. But we also know that there is an, an enormous diversity in Europe and also an inadequate access, especially in Eastern Europe, countries. So that diversity exists. We definitely need better data for exploring that and documenting the real issue. And is that something, better data, is that something that's been worked on, that's improving? Is that going in the right direction? So it looks like uh, raising awareness of, uh, on a problem with opioids has been relatively effective among prescribers, but it also looks that an entire generation has been exposed to uh, opioids and then a comprehensive approach will be definitely required to adequately tackle the problem and, all, and then finally to improve the uh, access to uh, high quality pain management and uh, meaning that also a safe pain management. So when um, looking at prescribing or administering opioids for pain management, what are the most important aspects that uh, the practitioner should be considering? So what is very important is just to apply the very simple principle of rational prescribing, and that's definitely applicable to opioids. So that means having a good diagnosis because all type of pain uh, don't necessarily respond well to opioids having an idea about the prognosis and explaining that to the patient and then speaking about the potential benefit but also the risk of any kind of treatment and then implementing a shared decision process to be sure that it's okay. Planning from the beginning a good follow-up is absolutely essential and unfortunately not always uh, implemented uh, nowadays. And what about the range of clinical tools and, uh, and tests that are available to clinicians? What, what is available to help them in risk assessment and decision making? What support is there? So that depends on the situation, but let's speak about uh, postoperative pain management. For instance, after major surgery, um, we know that opioid induced ventilator impairment can be an issue. And we know that risk factors are very well known. That's advanced age, that's co-sedative. So co-sedative is definitely a, an important risk factor parenteral use of opioids or high dose of uh, opioids and then that includes also people uh, at risk of using high dose of opioids like taking opioids before uh, surgery and people with uh, respiratory um, disease. So that's for immediate prospective uh, management and then for later other tools may be just again applying the principles of fresh and prescribing and a very easy uh, acronym might be the BRAN acronym, so discussing in shared decision making, uh, benefit, risk, alternatives, or the potential option of doing nothing or prescribing nothing. That may also include non pharmacological um, strategies. That's sometimes complex, so even to simplify more, if it's required, we may just ask to patient before surgery what matters to you. And just to finish off, what are some of the current and emerging options to, to combat the opioid epidemic? So definitely we need to implement much better multimodal analgesia. That can be defined very simply by the use of opiate sparing techniques with an S. So that means um, at least two non-opioids um, or non-opioid technique, including local regional, but definitely paracetamol and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs if there are no contraindications. That's something that we should absolutely need. Implementing local regional, but also not forgetting uh, the fact that in the NICE guidelines, uh, one moderate to severe pain is observed or expected low dose of ketamine is recommended. Well, Patrice, thank you so much. Lots to think about there. Thank you for joining us and have a great Congress. Thank you very much for the uh, invitation.